Hi guys, I just did a short video comparing the angle of movement on a servo on the three different channels on this Flysky FSGR3E. And what we find is that on channel, let's have a look, what one are we on at the moment? Right, we're on channel one at the moment, and you'll see we've got the 90 degrees there because it's a SG90 or whatever they call it, 90 servo. So 90 degrees. If I put it in channel two, we get the same. If I put it in channel three, uh, we get slightly less. I don't know if that's noticeable there. It's probably about 80 degrees. That was in answer to a question that I had on one of my videos. So it looks like, for some reason, the setting on channel three gives you less throw. Um, so that's fine. There are videos on the subject of changing the resistors in the servo to change the amount of the angle it moves through, you can change it to get it to 180 degrees instead of 90 degrees. And I'll put links to those videos, well I'll put them in the playlist that I've got for working with servos. But it occurred to me, what I could do is I could rig up a little breadboard here, intercept the wires on the servo, pull the right end out, Right, it's going to be a little bit awkward to get in there and do it, but apparently the trick is to put resistors on the wires that go up to the potentiometer that measures your amount of travel anyway, apparently. And the video works, I've watched the video, so I thought I'd try it myself, but instead of just inserting resistors in there, which is going to be a little bit awkward here. Um, I'll wire out to here and we can try either a variable resistor out here or a set of um, a set of fixed resistors. Ignore what's on there at the moment, that's just a scrap breadboard I'm going to use. So that's what I'll do. I'll take this one apart so we can intercept the tags between the potentiometer. Oh, let's go close up. Right, close-up mode, we can see the green potentiometer there. If I turn the servo on, you can see the centre of the potentiometer turning. And then this potentiometer has got three legs on it that are soldered directly to the circuit board. On some of these servos, the potentiometer is on bits of wire and then the wires are soldered to the circuit board. So you could intercept those wires and put resistors in place. What I'm going to do is cut the legs there, divert them away to my breadboard and either have variable resistors or a selection of fixed resistors that we can see if we can make the difference to the amount of turn, amount of um, rotation. Just occurred to me that I ought to take the servo apart from scratch or from new for those of you who've never taken one apart, as you can see, this particular one's got two screws in the base. Lots of them have got four, but they serve the same purpose. They hold the top to the bottom. Then if we pull the bottom off, we've got the circuit board. We've got the incoming power, which is the brown. Well, let's have a look, the brown and the Red is the incoming power. Normally that would be black and red on other systems, but for some reason brown and red here. And then the yellow wire is the signal wire that actually tells the servo what to do. So the brown and the red are the power that actually gives it the power to operate and run the little motor. And the yellow one is a signal that comes in there and tells the chip how far to rotate the arm. 
and with this particular board the motor is soldered directly on the end of it oh, get back into the middle of the picture yeah that those two tags are the feed to the motor and then the variable resistor or potentiometer is the green thing under there that's the bit that as the arm turns turns round the information from that variable resistor is fed back to the circuit and tells it how far the arm has turned so it knows how far to turn it depending on what you've done with your controller so that's the circuit and then at this end We've got the geared motor stepped down to give it plenty of power. So just there is the pinion wheel for the motor. And then that turns that gear. The gear in there turns that gear, I think. Now I've got to remember which way around this works. Yeah, that'd be right. That one's actually freewheeling, that one. And then the top of that gear turns that one. And then the top of that gear turns that one, which is the one that actually turns the arm. And you will notice there's a couple of little plastic pegs sticking up there. They prevent the arm going all the way around. So if you want your servo to turn 360 degrees, which there are lots of videos on on YouTube, including one of mine, you chop those two little bits of plastic off so it can turn all the way. So, we don't want to forget those gears, but we want to try and get the motor out and the circuit board it's attached to. And I think... Looking at that, those plastic clips are probably holding it all in place. Plastic clips are on the potentiometer. All right, back in focus. Yeah, I just had to push those in on either side, and that's released them. And then we want to push the motor up as well. So that's all going to come out. So these are the legs I'm going to cut, the two outside legs, so I can wire away so we can have an external resistor. Right, you can probably see I've just cut those two legs, so I'll bend them back, solder some wire on them. So there you are, I've intercepted the leg, and on this side two grey wires. On the other side, two pink wires. All back together, so you can see all my wires coming out the side of the servo. At the moment, they're actually just going to themselves. So if I pull that one out, then the servo circuit thinks that there's zero res resistance there, and it's trying to line up with it. Same with the other one, if I pull that out goes the other way. So at the moment it's as normal. Despite the wires being there they're just shorted together so the servo is turning as much as it would normally. We're on that channel 3 at the moment which is slightly less turn. Let's stick it on Channel one. Oh, because you can't see me operating it. Let's bring that in a bit closer. All right, there we go. So that's channel one. And if we put our bit of paper back under there, just to remind us where we're going. should be in the middle at the moment so if I put that 
like that and then go yeah okay that's our existing movement I've put variable resistors here so I can actually alter them so Ah, idiot. Idiot, Grandad, you haven't moved the wires. No wonder nothing's happening. Right, we actually need these variable resistors in circuit. Then we might get some difference. <laughs> Straight away you can see we're turning much further. Right, now let's have a fiddle. Okay. So you can see we're varying the position there. Now what happens if we go... So that's our centre position. a bit there so we're not turning as far now a bit further we seem to have moved the center position over to the right a bit don't we This is live, as far as I'm concerned. I've never, never tried this before. Oh, that's reduced the movement. Right, got 180 degree movement there now, haven't we? So yes, changing the resistance changes the amount of movement. I'm not going to measure those resistances because it's fairly irrelevant. You choose what you want. I think the video I was watching... No, I don't remember what you said, whether it was 220 or whether it was 22k. There'll be links in the video description to the playlist for my videos for working with servos, which includes taking the um, little stopper out of there and modifying it so it does full 360 degree rotation. But I'm pleased with that. So there we go. 180 degree rotation. We could probably keep playing with that and go even further. But if I take those variable resistors out of circuit, then we're back to just the 90 degrees. Fascinating. Thanks for watching. If you want more information, check down below in the video description. If you like this video, you might like this one up here. And if you want to subscribe, you can check out my channel over here. Up here is my latest video on my channel. And down here is a video playlist associated with the video you've just watched. Thanks again for watching.